Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready now to commence with the wedding speeches. So could you please press silence for the father of the crowds, Paul. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Let me introduce myself. I'm Paul, father of the beautiful bride. Yeah. <laughs> Firstly, I would like to thank you all for joining the Fadden, the Dorset, and the Spice families in celebration of the marriage of Becky and Callum on this special and happy occasion. I know many of you have travelled from far and wide to be here today. I thank you for that. That being said, there are people who can't be with us today for various reasons. So can I ask you to be upstanding and raise your glass to absent friends and family. Absent friends and family. Absent friends and family. Please be seated. <laughs> From the moment Becky entered this world, weighing less than five pounds and two months early, the first and last time she was early for anything, <laughs> she has brought nothing but joy and happiness into her lives. It only seems like yesterday that Becky was standing in her school uniform, ready for her first day at school to becoming the beautiful bride she is today. Her journey has been eventful, but worth it. Even from a young age, Becky knew she would teach. I would often come home to a garden full of Becky's friends playing schools. She always showed an interest in sports, trying everything from swimming to ice skating, and more recently, showed an interest in the new Olympic sport of pole dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so that first dance should be interesting, eh? <laughs> It was whilst working at Cottingham Parks that she met Callum, at first a work colleague, soon blossoming into love. Being introduced to Callum and seeing what a nice young man he is, going out for meals, spending time together, trips to London and Lanzarote, along with his love of football, I knew he was the one. <laughs> for me. <laughs> I will say, Callum, that today has been an emotional and difficult day. As a Scotsman, I never give anything away. <laughs> but it's been my absolute pleasure giving you Becky's hand in marriage. Aww. Today, Mandy and I... Today, Mandy and I... She's always been perfect. I don't know what's gone wrong here. Sorry about that. <laughs> Kind and caring, and a best friend when you need one. But when the mood takes her, she can be a bit of a shopaholic. And as a wardrobe of winter, summer, and autumn outfits, some have never even been worn. And I'll bet you the one she's wearing today won't see the light of day again. Oh. <laughs> And with all the mayhem and organising that goes into an occasion like this, I was delighted to help in any way I could, for example with the dance floor and the flower wall, but the hardest part was the seating arrangements. The head table kind of sorts itself out. But I suggested to Becky and Callum that the guests that gave the most expensive gifts should sit near the front. <laughs> I'd like to thank, therefore, Dave and Elner, if you can hear me at the back. <laughs> Thanks for the oven glove. <laughs> Cheers. As I look at this beautiful woman before me in a lovely wedding dress, I can't help but reflect on the girl she was and the woman she has become. She became dad's, li dad's little girl on the day she was born and has always been a princess to me. All through her life, she has been brought joy to her mother and me. And whilst not every day has been perfect, the love I feel for her has been. Today she joined hands with a wonderful young man, and in addition to the sparkle I have always seen in her eyes, today I see a love and joy there beyond anything I have seen. 
She and Callum today have completed each other as they become a new family unit. I can truthfully say that I knew that this day would come and have been thinking about what I would say in terms of counsel and wishes for my little girl and her new husband. Becky has always had an attitude of compassion to those around her. All through her school years, she was loved by all who knew her. She has always been concerned about other people and was especially aware of those less fortunate and perhaps not, not as popular. She always sought for the best in others and helped them to feel valued. Now that sense of compassion reaches its apex in her life thus far as it becomes focused on one man with whom she has chosen to spend the rest of her life. Putting the same compassion, love and energy into her husband that she has put into her friends will result in a truly remarkable partnership and a friendship now and always. With, with time, that partnership will expand as Becky and Callum welcome children into their family. <laughs> Becky... <laughs> 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 Becky will be an extraordinary mother and bring that trait of compassion and selflessness into the life of a child. Who would not want a mother as beautiful, talented and loving? I mean it. <laughs> this, new, this new couple, two amazing individuals and together they become an even more amazing couple. My advice to you is Love constantly, accuse slowly, <laughs> forgive quickly, <laughs> and share everything. Be each other's best friends, leaving behind any other relationship that might cause you to put another ahead of your spouse. Everyone, please join me today in wishing Rebecca and Callum every happiness possible for a long and joyful life together as husband and wife. Can I ask you please to be upstanding and raise your glass to yeah. toast Rebecca and Callum. Thank you, Callum. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you uh, see my hairline from the back? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for those kind words, Paul. I knew it would be a tough job to follow your speech, and I was right, I could not follow a word of it. <laughs> I remember when I started this process and I got down on one knee and then down onto the other and asked Paul to pay for the wedding. <laughs> um, you've been nothing but welcoming and kind to me. Thank you and Mandy, Matty and Lucy for bringing me into your family so effortlessly. Um, I can't thank you enough for the generosity you've shown me. I've inherited the best mother and father-in-law a guy could ask for. I'm yet to visit your house and not have a cold beer in my hand <laughs> within five minutes. Paul has not tried to fully turn me yet into a true Scotsman, as I haven't been introduced to his stash of butt fast or heroin. <laughs> <laughs> but it's only a matter of time. <laughs> Above all, thank you for raising a beautiful, caring daughter and giving her away willingly. Maybe right. too willingly. <laughs> <laughs> but trust me when I say I will always love, protect and care for your daughter and my beautiful wife. Um, during the speech I'll be thanking a couple of people. However, just to speed it on, we've got some gifts, but um, I'll hand them out at the end. Um, so thank you to the beautiful bridesmaid. You look amazing today. You've done a fantastic job. Thank you for... Um, Always been there for Becky when she needs you. Thank you for the uh, my brothers and sisters that did the readings at the beginning of the wedding. It was fantastic. And the Scottish family for travelling to us. You'll do anything for a free meal, you'll not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 
Mum, Dad, Ian, Leslie, thank you for being such strong role models in my life and welcoming Becky into your home. And Mandy and Paul for offering the help that you've given us to us today. Here we go. Grab your tissues. Breathe. Come on, the lads. Um, make sure your glasses are full. Uh, as I'd like to address the elephant in the room to start with. So, some of you may have noticed that Becky isn't drinking today, and if she does, it's a minimal amount. Um, she didn't want me to say anything, but now I think is a better time than any. Um, we've just come up to 12 weeks on our Sky Sports package. <laughs> um, we're actually risking search providers. <laughs> All joking aside, <laughs> my beautiful wife, aka Mrs. Dorset, has put a lot of effort into today and she looks absolutely stunning. It's been said that a relationship is a 50 50 partnership, and whoever said that knew nothing about women <laughs> and even less about fractions. <laughs> Becky has been working tirelessly to make this day special for everyone, and I think she's done a fantastic job. Yeah. We have gone through a careful selection process to make sure everything is right. Well, Becky selected, but I got to choose my own socks and pants. <laughs> Small <laughs> ones. <laughs> so can I just raise a glass to my beautiful wife, please? So, laughter is an important part of our lives, and I feel Becky's patience knows no bounds with me. From the first few weeks of being together, I was diagnosed with chronophobia, which is a fear of being on time. <laughs> Apparently, it's hereditary. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Life is short, but love is everlasting. And when I look at Becky, I see her eyes are full of it. She is fiercely loyal, her kindness knows no limits and she has all the qualities that make her a beautiful human being. Her actions speak as loud as her words. She always goes above and beyond and never asks for anything in return except for a smile on that person's face. My family had a tough time these past few months with her granddad passing and changes at work. However, she's been with me every step of the way. When someone you love says to you, whatever decision you make, I'll support you, and whatever happens, we will get through it together. Makes you know that you're with the right person. So as I said, laughter is what drives us, and love grows through that. So when we were first getting with it together, there were a couple of things that happened which made me realize we'd have a great future together. Number one, when Becky came around to my mum and Ian's house for her first Sunday lunch. <laughs> All was fine, and my mum passed Becky the hot roast potatoes and said, mine, they're hot. We started eating, and as she's from Long Hill, she had a case of 10 men syndrome, <laughs> and she shoved the full roast in her mouth. <laughs> in slow motion then assumed, and quickly became a reality, as she spat the full roast potato <laughs> onto her plate, splattering the table with gravy. <laughs> Silence ensued, and Ian sat back in his chair, stared blankly at Becky, and said, well, Callum, she's a keeper. <laughs> the second event was a bit more unfortunate for myself, um, and I knew at this point I could never really leave the relationship. It was a fair sleep over the summer, a hot August night, and the room was like a sauna, so naturally I went off fresco. <laughs> 4 a.m. dawned and nature called. I answered. However, I couldn't find anything to cover up, so I risked it. Girls love a risk taker. <laughs> Winks at Becky, it said. <laughs> Once business was complete, I turned to leave the bathroom and I heard it a creak. I panicked. I opened the door. <laughs> However, Mandy had other ideas. She turned the landing light on and I was pinned like a police searchlight. 
I then did what all well endowed <laughs> 21 year old men would have done at the situation. I shriveled like a burnt marshmallow <laughs> and died for, for, for cover in Becky's room. However, from that day on, I've always had extra sausages on my plate. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I can't really hammer my best men through fear of retaliation. However, my brother has surprised us all last year when he brought home a, go a girl last Christmas. It says, can you all just give me a woo, please? Thank you. Yes, that's right, a girl. He'd been trying online for the past six years. Before they told him Grinder wasn't the best deal. <laughs> Even more excited, his girlfriend is now pregnant, which only means one thing. Congratulations on losing your virginity. <laughs> Finally, Danny, Laufey and Josh have done a fantastic job organising my stag do, and I still have a slight case of post-traumatic stress disorder. I've been flinching at shadows and crying under my bed when they come alone. But I thank them for always being there for me at times of need. And they are my extended family. So, my final farewell is a final game of Guess Who before I leave you. Please make your own assumptions as to who these stories match to. During your meal, I won't be saying any names. On his first night out back from Afghan, he was found on his kitchen floor surrounded by vomit and his pants were full front and back. <laughs> The second culprit, one of these men in year seven, had his bike stolen and was beaten up by a group of primary school children. All of which were girls. <laughs> and finally, this man wore the same pair of trainers for a week in a beat fair without any socks. By day five, the cleaner refused to clean our room due to the smell of trench foot. <laughs> Thank you all for coming, enjoy your meal, get drunk and dance. last night while I was sat on the toilet. <laughs> but before I say my bit properly, let's all put hands together for the newlyweds, Becky and Callum. <laughs> let's also put our hands together to the Dorsets, Faddams and Spices for helping and organising this fabulous day. <laughs> and finally, Let's put our hands together to Josh for not crying his eyes out for the proceedings early on today. <laughs> what a brilliant day so far. I've got the mic now, so I'm afraid it's all going to go downhill from here. <laughs> Best men speeches. Where do I start? I'll keep mine short, sweet and appropriate, but at the same time, amongst us, there's a few areas we'd like to touch upon. I'll also try to cut the swearing out, because no doubt when Laufey says his part, he'll educate us all with new swear words that even Ian hasn't heard of. <laughs> so grandmas, make sure you've got your earmuffs on standby. <laughs> For all you that doesn't know, I went to school with Dorsa. Didn't really know him properly throughout school, and never really liked him. Still don't, if I'm honest. <laughs> 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 it was only for his mum Sue and her fantastic hostess skills and her wonderful spreads <laughs> while we'd all attend his parties and gatherings. Cheers. And on the most important day of his life, he decides to choose us set of idiots to say a heartwarming speech. Well, they ain't much luck at that pal. <laughs> we properly crossed paths in college studying sport. I was reluctantly forced to pair up with him and it all started to make sense. Make sense why I'd been avoiding this reasonably good-looking Swedish kid throughout school. <laughs> <laughs> My suspicions were confirmed. Never trust a kid 
whose hairline is receding at the age of 17 years old. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to go, mate. Says it all. Alex accepted fate. Well done, Alex. <laughs> Shaved it all off. Wears his skull like a true champion. <laughs> you will be getting the big careers out soon. You're happily married now, so I'd say that peaceful and content baldness will set in within six weeks. <laughs> Anyways, back to the perfect couple. Becky and Callum Dorset, the newlyweds. Ooh. Today is a day of love. And us the people have been lucky enough to witness and share this fantastic day with the both of you. You've both created many wonderful memories together, not only between yourselves, but also happy memories for all the individual people who you've both carefully selected to attend this day. Without a shadow of a doubt, you will both have memory, many more amazing moments to cherish together. Now after that reasonably nice bit, I'm not going to lower the tone too much, because it is a momentous day, and it would be totally unfair to embarrass Callum and partially embarrass Becky on their wedding day, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> oh, well, I've got a little love story to tell, and I just hope they don't hit the kill switch on the mic before I finish it. <laughs> Alright. It. It's obviously been love since day one. Day one or somewhere close to what we should put in the same bracket as day one. This period was a very eventful and emotional time for Callum. <laughs> Not so much for the sweet innocent Becky on my head, but for Callum. I remember all the way back in the summer of 2009, around 10 years ago, we had just left college and an 18 year old Callum came to me looking startled, panicked and in a state of shock. Because of this, and being the kind hearted, considerate person I am, I asked him what was wrong. He then rattled off the following. So let me paint the picture. Summer 2009, Callum was at his mum's house in the bedroom on the ground floor. Curtains closed. Brilliant. Now that many years ago, being the unorganised idiot he was, there was another, another girl Callum had made plans with that day. We won't bring a name into it, so for that purpose, we'll just call it Oh Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Oh Shit, thought Callum was busy playing football at the time. He was busy alright, and it wasn't football, but you could still say he was busy playing with his balls. <laughs> while someone else was doing the majority of the playing. Maybe there was even a strong tackle involved. We'll never know. But what I do know is that the female Callum was with that day, and ten years later, is the beautiful, sweet young woman who sat behind him and who got married to him today. Oh, he did it. He did it. Yes! Yes! Shame! Shame! Now, may I add, and obviously being the kind of hearted, honest female she is, Becky knew nothing about her shit. She did unfortunately find out when her shit stormed through the front door at, Becky, Be at Dorset's mum's house and caught them both in flagrante, so to speak. But before I get punched for telling that, the moral of the story wasn't to embarrass Dorset as a cliche best man speech. It really won't be honest. <laughs> uh, might have been a little bit. These two young adults, who I call my friends, are both the perfect example of how we should conduct ourselves throughout our daily lives. Hard working, reliable, thoughtful, and kind. So on that note, let's all, all raise a glass and make a toast. I don't have a glass. <laughs> Not to only the excessively priced alcohol, where I am, there you are. <laughs> but on behalf of everyone, we wish you all the happiness in the world throughout the next chapter of your lives. To Mr. and Mrs. Dawson. I'm going to bore you like you just did. <laughs> <laughs> and I am going to try and wrap this out like you just did. I'm just going to say a few words, short and sweet. Right, well, yeah, I've said that, I'm not going to bore you. <laughs> Firstly, I'd like to raise a toast to the beautiful Brad and Groom. It's been a pleasure and a beautiful day, that's my big man. <laughs> I appreciate you inviting me, I love it. All the best. <laughs> right, let's regroup. Yeah, I'd just like to say how privileged I am spending this day with wonderful people. All of you, I mean it, you're all beautiful. I love you all. Everyone. Right, for those of you who don't know me, we've all been friends since school, all of us, just us four here, and them two over there. And the black one as well. Hi guys. Who's that? So I love him really, I am racist either, I love him. 
been friends in school, and we will be for many years to come, I'm sure of it. Um, for a bunch of average guys, we've definitely had many ups and many downs in our lives. Laugh through the good times. For example, when Cal kicked me off a trampoline, and I landed on a plastic box, and I broke two ribs. <laughs> and Susan was washing my jumper the next day. So I just spent like 40 quid on a jumper, it was ruined. Yeah. Yeah. Perry, man. And we've also shed tears through the sad times, but no matter how much life brings you down, you know you have these good men by your side to keep you going no matter what. And I love you all. I do, genuinely. All the way. So on that note, I'd like to make a toast to friends and family, past and present. So we'll do another toast. Another toast. I just like drinking. <laughs> See you now. Oh, I'm on you. So finally, I would like to say, Cal, I love you, mate, and I hope you and Becky will be very happy together for the rest of your lives. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm now going to pass you over to the weirdly looking hairy guy, John. <laughs> Who is actually a part of this wedding and not some homeless guy to run the street? I love you guys. Push it. Sure, Josh. He is our friend, honestly. Go, Josh! Not Lee Langley. Love you, Josh. Right, I'll keep man very short. <laughs> so, um, yeah, basically, the uh, fondest memory of uh, me and Ensek Grum's name here um, <laughs> is when. <laughs> Nobody should have put his name in there. Uh, cost me £40 on the internet last night. <laughs> but uh, no, in all seriousness, though, so, um, Callum is basically like the brother I have always wanted, but never really had. Um, been through a lot of ups, a lot of downs, but he's always been there for me when I need him the most. Um, pretty much saved my life on a few occasions, but um, yeah, <laughs> the fact that he's found his soulmate and uh, I've never seen him happier just warms my heart. So. Yes. Welcome to Team Gossip. Okay. Go on, Josh. Well done, son. Thank you. Good job there, mate. Right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get some desserts. We love you, Callum. <laughs> <laughs> and Becky. He's crying. Yes. <laughs>